that before we pick up where we left off, are there questions? Let's pick up. All right, so I have an ordinary copper pipe here. Bought the four copper, got too expensive. It is not a magnetic material. And I think these, hopefully you can uh, believe that these are magnetic as opposed to I've got some something on the bottom of it. It's just, it just sticks. Aluminum is also not magnetic. It won't stick to that down there. So there's something obviously on the back side of this which is not aluminum. But it's not magnetic because I can put it right there and it won't stick to it. What I want to do is have some sort of sense of how long it takes for something to fall through the tube. So I'm going to start out with an ordinary marker and just sort of, you can hear it go down and This won't break, I've other things that will break. There. So, some sense of how long it takes to go down. Uh, we can also get some sort of sense of friction inside the tube just by dropping one on the inside and on the outside. About the same, I think this one kind of got caught at the top there when I let go. But, air, but resistance inside the tube, not particularly significant. So now I take a magnet. Actually, it's a whole bunch of, of those little button magnets that you can buy at. Well, I think I got these at Home Depot. Longer, same. Longer, longer. I increase the number of magnets. That was about the same as it was before. And then some more powerful magnets. That. It sounded like it hit the sides of the pipe all the way down. So was it like slowly spinning around? Oh, yeah, actually, I have a look. Yeah, it's sort of going off at an angle, kind of going around like that. At least that's the way it looked. Through my small little view there. So the question is, why? Okay, we have uh, opening words. You want to expand on that or just sort of leave that for someone else to pick up? I'm going to lay the groundwork. <laughs> All right, so we have magnetic fields thrown out onto the field. Wait for someone else to pick it up and run with it. Maybe it's because the magnetic field that the magnets are giving off is opposing, but not stronger than the magnetic field of the copper. Or did you say it didn't give off the magnetic field? Magnetic, the copper is not a magnetic medium. Does it have anything to do with how powerful a magnetic field is? It does. Okay. Because in my head, like picturing the, like the field, if right. it's stronger, like if it was weaker, it would probably fall quicker. But if it was stronger, then it would be like I just don't know what it would be opposing that would keep it in the pipe longer, right? Yeah. Okay. There must be a secondary magnetic field that's being created in the opposite direction to prevent it from going down faster. Newton's law. Yes. Not Newton's law. I mean, we worked that in there, but that's not the primary law involved here. It reminds me of our conversation. We were talking about the area expanding or increasing or decreasing, and how that—I um, don't remember whose 
his law, which white European man would be part of that team. But essentially, that that something is opposing something because something is changing, and in a lot of our formulas, it was an area. So maybe it has something to do with the distance that the magnet is traveling, like something that's being altered as it moves through there. Maybe it's like the the area from being like in free space to being on the field because it's narrowing. You're, you're close on a number of those things that you said. Uh, I think you'd be hard pressed to make an argument for a change in the area, unless you're going to make an argument that the tube is somehow shrinking as the thing falls. Yeah. It actually pulls the copper tube inwards on itself, but we don't actually, you can't see it. That's exactly yeah, I'm, I'm, I, just, I, I'm if, being really sarcastic. I, I think we can safely eliminate the copper tube changing. There might be some change in length as, as it falls, or some change in the thickness as it falls, but it would be so imperceptible. Uh, probably need multi million dollar equipment to measure that. But the effect is more significant than some infinitesimally small change in the size of the pipe. You said, sorry, go ahead. You, go ahead. you can go. All right. Um, Instead of the like area changing in the formula, the, would it be the magnetic field changing instead? Okay, what formula are you talking about? Either one, anyone. Uh, that's what I was going to say too, Brooke. The delta. Um, what's this? Or yeah, the flux. You know, I always think of the deathly howls when I see that. If anyone's yeah. a Harry Potter fan. So if the electric flux is changing, then we have to create that secondary magnetic field. All right. So if that's changing, then we create a voltage, which then creates the secondary. Well, what does the voltage do? I mean, it sets up for a secondary magnetic field being created, but it has to do. It actually creates something else, which creates the magnetic field. Um, electric potential difference. Okay, so you define voltage. What does the voltage do? Hmm. It was rather prominent in the second test. Voltage does not come out of batteries. What comes out of batteries? Electrons. Okay. Uh, yes, and that's what I was going for. So current. So this creates a current, which creates the secondary magnetic field. So if it's being slowed down, so let's just, I don't know which is the north and which is the south end of the magnets when I drop them in, but if I've got Got north and south here in the copper pipe. Which way is the secondary current flowing, let's say down here, in order to oppose this? Uh, the current's flowing this way? Right. The secondary current must be, right? Well, it's not really a primary current involved here. So you're saying the current's flowing up? That's that's what you first speculated, and that's what you're going with? Well, I don't think so. Well, OK, so when we have that coal that we dropped suddenly on the ground, and we were all terrified, does anyone remember this moment? You had made the argument that the electrons in this coal were moving downward because the coal was moving downward. Right. By the same logic, the electrons that are in this magnet should also be moving downward because of gravity, which means that the current in the magnet would be flowing upward which means that the opposing current would actually have to be downward? That's just a counter argument. So yeah, all right, right, so when the pole, which way did the current flow when I was dropping it? Which way did the current flow in the pole? By Anna's logic, though. 
or I don't remember. There were so many different, like, well, because of this, it's this, and then it's actually this. So I, I felt like I didn't know at the end of that conversation, to be honest. I also feel like we were talking about <laughs> going out to one side or the other at one point. Yes, and we were. That when the poll drops, oh, it's still here. So if I take this and I drop it, if we assume the magnetic field's going in that direction, as it drops, there will be a current that is flowing through this left or right. Now we generally don't talk about a current going up or down because as this is falling, we have just as many electrons going down as we have protons going down. It, I'm assuming that this is a neutral rod. And so the net charge is zero as it flows down. But there are electrons that are being pushed one way or the other. So let's see. So if that goes down, magnetic field going that way, the current's going to flow this way. The electron's going that way. We're just assuming the magnetic field is coming out. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's north, isn't it? Great question. I, I think that's the, generally the northern direction. Okay. Yeah. okay. We'll go with that. And also, you know, the Earth is not a perfect magnet where, you know, all the magnetic field lines coming from the Earth are parallel to the ground, all heading towards the North Pole. And also the North Pole is the South Pole. Yeah, that's, so. that's why I put quotation marks in there. Yes, this is North Pole. I mean, it, it sort of goes out and comes in. There's, it's, it's not... I'm a genius, it's not the word I'm looking for, but I'm going to go with it anyway. <laughs> it's not an ideal magnet. All right, so in this particular case, though, if I have a current flowing that way, so let's just say this is inducing the voltage which creates a current flowing up. So I'm not claiming it does, I'm just saying what if. What is the direction of the magnetic field that this creates? Well, if our current's going up, then it's going... Right? It's okay. So the magnetic field then would be coming, I guess that's out over here and in over here and across. Why would that oppose this magnet? Because that one must be turning the other way, right? Yeah. That which one is what? Well, like the magnetic field down here, if that is opposing this one, then by that same logic, magnetic field from the magnet itself must be curving in the opposite direction, in the, right? But the magnet doesn't have like a current. Right, because, okay, right. The magnet, this magnet right here, the magnet that's falling through at the North Pole, it's the North, Why that again, magnetic field coming out the North Pole and into the South Pole. Right. That's basically the magnetic field coming from the magnet. Oh, so is the current going like sideways and is that why it's hitting the sides of the pipe? Part of it's hitting the side of the pipe is the fact that I'm not gonna drop it perfectly straight. Right. And, and also, I'm not sure I had it perfectly aligned. But, but even still, it hit the side like a lot. Like, uh, yeah, if it's just slightly off, it's gonna hit one side, then it's gonna hit another side. Yeah, sure. it, okay. So, Brooke, it sounded like you were almost there, or if not completely there. Which way is the current gonna flow that's induced? So the current's going to flow that way? That would, when you said left, is that what you meant? Yeah, I don't know. That's where it up. If it flows up, it creates a magnetic field coming this way. So we've got, let's try some, some sort of color coding here. So black will be the current, and the magnetic field that's created by that current, I'll put in green. So if the current's flowing up, the induced current is flowing up, that means that the magnetic field is flowing around like, like that. So it's going into the board, out of the board, and around. Mm -hmm. This magnetic field is not going to oppose that magnetic field. They're perpendicular to each other. It's coming out of the board. Say it again? It's coming out of the board. The current? Yeah. So if the current's coming out of the board, so all the electrons from the other side are being pulled over to this side, or I guess being 
I guess the electrons would be going the other direction. Yeah. So the current would be flowing basically like that. Symmetry, symmetrical on both sides? Mm, no. That looks like the orientation, right? It is, it, there is, we are dealing with motion parallel to the ground. All right, let's take it from a different point of view. If I have a North Pole down like this, which way would the North Pole, if I had a second magnet in there, which way would it have to be oriented so that this gets slowed down? The North Pole facing the North Pole is All right. the same. So it has to create a secondary, not a magnet, but a magnetic field. It has to create, create something that looks like that. I was about to ask if the ground is doing that, but that makes no sense. Yeah, no, uh, Because otherwise no, no. gravity wouldn't be. <laughs> They're like magnetized objects. If you like put it somewhere, it's just like. It, I, I, I'm going to say, as far as this course is concerned, you know, the, the gravitational pull of the Earth and the magnetic field are independent of each other. Yeah. However, when I was in grad school, someone started, did some early experimental work in that and actually feels like there is a connection there. Now, this is 20 years ago. I haven't heard about it since, so I imagine it did not pan out. But he had just come up with, there's an anomaly that he couldn't quite explain, uh, but did feel like he was close. All right, so if I have a, an electromagnet pointed in that direction, which way would current have to flow to create this? Think about current flowing through a loop in the magnetic field in the center. Oh, um, we did this in class, so if it's is it going to go into the board um, on the outside and then on the inside it goes into the board? Or out of it comes the out of the board inside. And then into the board, on the, like in the loop that you just drew. Oh, okay. Sorry. So if the current is flowing, so if I want to, if I want the magnetic field to be coming out of the board, which way would the current need to flow? Left. Or in a, in a left a circle. Counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. Yeah, that's All right. So a current flowing that way would create a magnetic field coming out in the middle. Yes. Over here. Which way would the current need to flow so that the North Pole is pointing up? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Like all outside? I don't know. Not, that would cancel each other out that would, if they were doing something like that. That was sort of along the lines of what Harrison said earlier. So we want the magnetic field to be pointing up. Yes. So the current will have to be wrapping around in the same direction that we drew that original magnetic field, where it's out of the board on the left, into the board on the right. So that's still perpendicular to. Oh, you're saying that's the current? Yeah. I don't get how there's a current when it doesn't create a current. I guess I'm hung up on like how do we determine what the current is if the magnet isn't creating the current? Where does it have a current? Well, you, you were earlier talking about the current within this magnet itself. Uh, I'm talking about the current that is in the pipe. Because of the magnet that doesn't exist. I guess I'm, I'm really lost conceptually. Yeah. All right. So let's go back to, well, a different launching point. That is the correct answer, by the way. All right, so if I've got a magnet that's falling through it, so this is a physical magnet that's falling down through a pipe. If I think about, I got some location right here and it experiences the magnetic field coming from that. It's a, it's a weak magnetic field the farther it is away. The farther you are from a magnet, the weaker it is for where you are. 
as it falls, what is happening to the magnetic field along this cross section that I have? So I take, so I've got the magnet up here falling, and I'm just looking at a cross section at this spot. What's happening to the magnetic field at this spot right here? Getting stronger. Yes. So what's happening to my magnetic flux? Changing. More specifically. Increasing. Yes. So I got a, I'm increasing my magnetic flux around some area right here, cross-sectional area. Nature doesn't like the increase. Doesn't like the change, but it doesn't like the increase. So it's going to create a magnetic field. It's going to induce a current, which will create a magnetic field to oppose that increase. Which slows it down. In order to do that, it has to weaken that magnetic field. And it will do so by creating a magnet pointing in the opposite direction. So as this gets stronger, as this magnetic field gets stronger and getting closer to it, this will become stronger and weaken it. Yeah. So you'll have two magnetic fields going in opposite directions to weaken it, to weaken the change. So nature just does that. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so the magnetic field coming out of the magnet is going from north to south, but ultimately we can think of it as pointing downwards towards this plane. Right. So the magnetic field from the magnet ultimately moves downwards. Yes. So the induced magnetic field has to be upward. Yes. So the induced current has to be around, around in this direction. Yeah, that makes sense. So right. into the board over here, out of the board over here. Right. Okay. Now, likewise, above the magnet, as it falls, what's happening? So if I think about, I've got some cross-sectional area right here. What's happening to the magnetic field after it's past it? It's getting weaker. So, therefore, it also creates another magnet or magnetic field there to also to still slow down the magnet, but it's like to try and pull it back up. Uh, yes, there was a step skipped in there in my head. Um, what is the direction of the magnetic field? The secondary magnetic field. What is the direction of it? above it. Well, it wants to strengthen it this time. Yes. Instead of weaken it. 